Hi. Today we're gonna do our uh, modern take on a classic piece of uh, French pastry, uh, a choux. We're gonna do it in a bit of a different version where we make a kraglin. Um, in Danish we call it a mariebolle. It's not that easy to say, so we'll keep calling it a kraglin throughout the throughout the this session. We're gonna add our water and our milk. We also have some sugar and our a la pro butter. Now we want to bring this to a boil, not a galloping boil, but just a simmer. The reason why we need to heat this dough is because when we put in all the flour, we're gonna toast the dough so that it, we can work in more eggs. And at the same time, we break down the starch in the flour and that makes our dough a little more sweet. So now we have brought our two liquids and our butter and sugar to a small boil. We don't want to boil it too long because we want to keep it as a moist dough so that it's easy to work with when we're going to move it into the pipping bag later. Right now we're just going to toast the dough, get everything moved around so it doesn't, doesn't burn. You see that the dough is starting to come together. The more we can toast it without burning it, the more eggs we can work into it and the better it will rise in the oven when the eggs, they receive the heat. So there we are. We'll put it into this bowl and we got our stand mixer over here with a whisk attached. We want to really make sure that it cools down a little bit before we add the eggs. If we add the eggs too soon, uh, the whites are going to coagulate and you're going to get uh, scrambled eggs and you, you don't want that. So we'll just leave it here for two to three minutes uh, until it uh, has cooled down. Just check it with your thermometer, do uh, 45 degrees. And when it's at 45 degrees, we'll start adding the eggs. So now we're gonna add the eggs. We'll just do maybe one, two at a time. For this recipe, we'll use around six eggs, but it's, it's always difficult to see how many eggs uh, should actually be used. But we'll have a look at it. Uh, you always want to use very fresh eggs for this. If the eggs have been in the shell for, uh, for a long time, they will start to, to get sour and they will uh, lose their ability to, uh, to leaven whatever you are leavening. So right now you can see, I think it's perfect. Yeah. So you want this very nice, thick, creamy consistency. I'll chuck it in a pipping bag, then I'll leave it in the fridge for a couple of hours until it's completely cooled. So what we want to do now is we want to take our pipping bag and then we'll just start pipping them into, uh, into the silicone mold. If you put in a bit too much, it doesn't matter. We're going to use an offset spatula to remove the rest. You can see the consistency here it has changed a lot and especially it has become harder, but it's still easy flowing. It's because both of the eggs have set, the proteins have coagulated, but at the same time, our olive pro butter has this amazing flexibility, which just make it very easy to work with. So we got them like this. We take our offset spatula and we just divide them out into the molds. Don't mind the mess over here. We're gonna take them out while they're frozen. So now it's ready to go in the freezer. So we got our sugar and our flour, and we'll just add all of our Ala Pro butter. We put it on the stand mixer and we want to knead it only until it has just, uh, just come together. Also make sure you don't get it uh, too warm so you pull out liquid from the butter. It's super easy to handle because it, it is just butter and sugar and, uh, and a, little bit of, uh, a little bit of flour. I'll just use uh, my hands here just to very quickly shape it. You can use your hands but don't use them too much because the heat from your hands it will melt the butter and the liquids from that will activate the gluten. So we just roll it out, turn it around and check it. And with a dough that is so easy to work with as this, I oftenly I just spread it out using my uh, rolling pin because if I roll it too much, 
since the dough is so thin and almost uh, almost liquid, you can see it has a tendency to, to, to cause ripples in it. Make sure the ripples, they don't come. If you're using a sheeter or whatever kind of machine you're using for this, you, you can set it to, uh, to two millimeters and then it will be perfect. So like that, and I will uh, put it in the fridge. I think half an hour will be fine. So our cracklin biscuit here, it needs to make sure that it comes straight out of the fridge. If it gets too warm, it gets too soft, and then your, your small biscuits, they will fall apart when you start working with them. If they fall apart when you're trying to take them up after you cut them, then you can put them back in the fridge and uh, just let the butter set. So we just want to start cutting them. I can show you the first one here. Basically what you want to do is just want to place it on top here. And you need to have your oven ready at 175 degrees. You don't want to use the hot air setting uh, on, your, uh, on your oven. If you're using the hot air setting, make sure that you turn it down to low. So for our Kreklin filling, we are going to do a rhubarb uh, compote. If you don't have rhubarb, you can use any kind of uh, acidic fruit or any kind of ber berries uh, you would like to use. So first of all, we just take the rhubarb. We want to cut it into some pieces that when we have cooked the compote, we still got a little bit of, of bite to the, to the rhubarb. So we just chuck them in our pot, add the sugar, and we're just going to boil it for 10 to 15 minutes. If it becomes a little bit dry, just add some, uh, just add a little bit of water. So now our compote is done. I always just uh, take it with the spoon, just take off a piece of uh, rhubarb, press it. Should feel firm, but not too firm. Now we turn it off the heat and we take our lemon. So off the heat and then in a pipping bag in a few moments when it's has cooled down. So for the filling of our fluffy and crispy kraglin, we're going to make custard, creme anglaise, uh, vanilla cream, call it what you want. We need some whole milk, some a la pro cream, we got some sugar, just a very simple and very uh, delicious uh, twist on our cream here is that we use some freshly grated lemon zest and some boa boa vanilla, which we have just dissolved in a little bit of sugar. We just need to get it up and boil. In another pot, we'll mix our egg yolks. And in here I have some uh, cornstarch and some sugar. Want to get that nice and mixed so that when you pour in your hot liquid, you don't get any lumps. When we're making creme anglaise with the a la pro cream, it also gives a higher stability than if you're using uh, unstabilized uh, cream, so you get a more even result. Put a little bit in there. Get it very nice and mixed up. Now it's very nice and mixed. We're gonna put it back on the heat. And here we're gonna use our whisks. Just have to be extra careful when using a whisk if, that you get out into every corner so it doesn't set. And for this type of uh, creme anglaise, when we're mixing it with the cream cheese, the cream cheese is gonna add a lot of fatness to our, to our finished product. You can take it off the heat if you want to, and there you have it, it's done. To begin with, we're gonna add our cream cheese to uh, the mixing bowl. The cream cheese here, it's gonna add lots of umami to our cream. And at the same time, it's gonna give a very, very nice uh, consistency. So we're gonna mix this up and just uh, make, it, make it creamy. I'll show you uh, the consistency in just uh, a few moments. When I'm standing here, I can already smell the nice uh, acidity coming from uh, the cream cheese. It just takes a few moments. 
you can see the consistency here it should just be worked in so then we take our cream just gonna whisk it again just want to get it mixed and uh, and incorporated I can show you the consistency again so when we're adding the Ala Pro cream here, we also get a very nice and fluffy cream here. Now we just use our spatula here to mix it in. Maybe I'll just give it a little spin. You don't want to churn this too much after you added the, the cream because then the cream it will separate and it will turn into butter and that's not the idea here. So we're gonna add that to our pipping bags and then we're gonna fill our kreglin. For the lid we want, we have made some tempered chocolate disc, we just tempered some white chocolate. Use my spatula to spread it out of a piece of plastic and another piece of plastic on top in the freezer and then I've used my iron here to, to just make these perfect little circles. We've got these freeze-dried uh, raspberries. You can use any kind of freeze-dried berry that is uh, sour. Then we're going to add a little bit of uh, sugar to it. If you just blend this on its own, it's going to turn brown very quick and it's going to stick to itself. So we, I'm adding a little bit of sugar and then I'm turning on my blender. And we just want to completely pulverize it so we can get it through our little egg here and we can dust our kakleen. We're also going to use some of it to dust on uh, the kakleen itself. So it's always a good sign when you have a lot of smoke coming out. That means it has been turned into what we want. We got this very beautiful pink color and I'm just going to take straight from the blender, I could put it back into a bowl. And if you want to keep it, just uh, put it in an, an airtight container. So just very gently put on our powder. We can always shake off the residual. These, they just sit here and then you can put them in a plastic container whenever you need them, bring them out. So now we're ready for assembling our shoe here with our Kaklin top. So I'll use this small knife to just make a small incision so I can get in there with all the cream cheese filling. So the inside you can see here it's very fluffy and you want to maybe use your finger here so you can make room for all that delicious uh, filling. So we start out with the cream cheese filling. I'm gonna put that inside like this. Just twist it around. Make a small nest for your for your rhubarb compote. In your compote, you have a little bit of lumps from the rhubarb because we haven't totally blended it out. Make sure you do it slow so you don't get like a piece of rhubarb that suddenly destroys the outside. Then we take our freeze-dried raspberry and our sugar. Just be generous with it because it gives a lot of beautiful color and it also brings out that acidity which is going to be the first thing that, uh, that hits the mouth. Then we got our tempered white chocolate disc here, also with the freeze-dried raspberry. We put that on top. So there you have it, our take on a shoe with a, a kreklin biscuit on top. Then we got our cream cheese filling inside and our rhubarb compote. <laughs>